More than 28,000 deaths are confirmed in Turkey and Syria tonight. Six days since the earthquake struck, rescuers continue to find victims, but amazingly also survivors. The whole building started shaking. The walls fell on top of me. I couldn't move. Also tonight, asylum seekers say they're afraid to go out after a protest turns violence in Merseyside. They said, please get us out, please, we just don't want to stay here. Please, can we move to another city? That's all they want, they just want to move, and I don't blame them. Scotland lift their second cup in a row after thrashing Wales in the Six Nations, and... Harry Styles. Harry gives a shout out to the women who were shut out at the Brits. I'm really, really grateful for this and I'm very aware of my privilege up here tonight. So this award is for Rena, Charlie, Florence, Mabel and Becky. Thank you so much. This is ITV News with Gamal Van Berlin. Good evening. It's now almost a week since Turkey and Syria were devastated by earthquakes. And as each day passes, the hope of finding anyone else alive in the rubble is fading. But rescuers are continuing their search for survivors tonight in freezing temperatures under the cover of darkness. The situation is desperate, with a number of confirmed fatalities passing 28,000 today. One town where the painstaking operation continues is Nadaga, a town near the epicentre in the shadow of snow-capped mountains where death is everywhere and hope is fragile. Peter Smith spent the day there and sent this report. Now pockmarking the landscape across southern Turkey, thousands of broken buildings have become makeshift graves. It's hard to imagine anyone could survive this. And yet we find 67-year-old Munivar Rescued from this rubble and just released from hospital, she's come back to see what's left of her home. We thought you were dead, her neighbours cry. How did you make it out alive? She knows she is one of Turkey's minor miracles. The whole building started shaking. The walls fell on top of me. I couldn't move. I was trapped like that for 24 hours. Then I heard a voice calling out, is there anyone in here? I shouted back, I'm here, I'm here. I've been told my husband is dead. They found his body three days ago under the rubble. The chances of finding anyone still alive are diminishing rapidly. But suddenly, one of the thermal cameras starts detecting heat. This rescue scene has just fallen totally silent because Against all odds, on the sixth day of searching, the team here believes they have now found signs of life. The rescue team calls down. If you can hear us, make a noise. But the silence is unbroken. They get back to work. This is agonising for those waiting. It's the hope that starts to hurt. The number of confirmed dead in Turkey and Syria has today gone above 25,000, and those still searching know they are now likely just recovering bodies for funerals. Peter Smith, ITV News, Nerduga. The Home Secretary has condemned the behaviour of protesters who became violent at a demonstration outside her hotel for asylum seekers in Merseyside. Suella Braverman called the disorder in Nosy last night appalling. Fifteen people were arrested after a police officer and two others were injured and a police van was set alight. From Nosley, Kelly Foran reports. A police van up in flames. Not the peaceful protest and counter-protest the police were initially dealing with. Riot police were called in after missiles were thrown at offices outside this Merseyside hotel, currently providing refuge for asylum seekers. It was surrounded by crowds. Some can be heard chanting, get them out. Get them out! Get them out! Police say this was sparked by rumours and misinformation circulating on social media following an alleged incident involving an asylum seeker. 
Almost 200 are staying here, most from the Middle East and Africa. In the time we were there today, only one person left the hotel, others too scared. Did you feel? Uh, afraid, sure. Afraid. Afraid. Uh, but, uh, How long have you been staying here? Uh, one month. One refugee who didn't want to talk on camera said, I didn't feel safe in my country and I don't feel safe here. Claire Mosley founded a refugee charity and was here as part of a counter-protest. She's been in communication with those inside. How can they live there now? How are they going to feel? They're never going to be able to leave. They're never going to be able to walk out the door. The people inside the hotel, what have they said to you? What did the text messages say? They said, please get us out. Please, we just don't want to stay here. Please, can we move to another city? That's all they want. They just want to move. And I don't blame them. <laughs> A banner saying, this is our city, left on fire-scorched ground. When you think that our area has been a sanctuary for refugees and for people fleeing war and famine uh, and persecution. These protests have come at a time where the use of hotels for asylum seekers has increased tenfold since the start of the pandemic. Merseyside police have labelled last night's destruction as dangerous and disgraceful. Kelly Foran, ITV News, Knowsley. MPs who quizzed the chairman of the BBC this week are due to publish their findings tomorrow about his role in facilitating a loan for the Prime Minister who later appointed him, Boris Johnson. Our political correspondent, Tom Sheldrick, is here. And Tom, that hearing was public, but is there any indication what this uh, committee will find? Yes, I watched the whole hearing on Tuesday, and I think they'll be very critical of Richard Sharp. He was questioned by the Digital Culture and Media Sport Committee about how he put a friend who wanted to give financial help to Boris Johnson in touch with the Cabinet Office in 2020. But Mr Sharp did not declare that during the vetting process uh, when he applied to be the chairman of the BBC. And his role in the £800,000 loan given to the former Prime Minister was only reported recently. On Tuesday, different MPs on the committee accused Mr Sharp of a monumental failure of judgment and a distinct lack of transparency and raised questions about whether he should resign. Uh, he said that he would regretted the distraction this has caused, but insisted it acted in good faith to ensure that rules around conflicts of interest had been followed. This report is likely to put further pressure on him, though, and there are two other investigations still ongoing. OK, Tom, thank you. In other news today, and Canada's Prime Minister says an unidentified object has been shot down after violating its airspace. Justin Trudeau says Canadian and US jets were scrambled to intercept the high-altitude object. It is the third craft to be shot down over North America after a suspected Chinese spy balloon last week and another unidentified object over Alaska yesterday. And the Metropolitan Police have been urged to reopen their Partygate investigation into Downing Street's illegal lockdown gatherings. A member of London's Police and Crime Committee says new information in an ITV News podcast, Partygate, the inside story, should be taken into account. In Rugby Six Nations, Ireland showed why they're ranked number one in the world by beating last year's Grand Slam champions, France, 32-19 in Dublin. But the day also belonged to Scotland. Never before have they won both of their first two Six Nations games, but they remain undefeated tonight after thrashing Wales 35-7 at Murrayfield. Chris Gudder was watching. A week ago, the Calcutta Cup at Twickenham, now the Doddy Weir Cup at Murrayfield. The Mercury is rising in Scotland after beating England. Seeing off Wales meant rare back-to-back -back victories to start the Six Nations. The match swung on one piece of handling. Wales had a golden chance to get to within a point at half-time, but Dyer's dropped pass was to prove costly. Wales don't have that second try. Early in the second half, Finn Russell showed how it should have been done. A sensational piece of handling, and Kyle Stane was in for Scotland's second try. What a pass from Finn Russell! Russell wasn't done there. He showed he could do it with the boot as well, and Stane scored again. for the walk-in, gets it down! Wales hadn't lost their first two Six Nations games for 16 years, but they were on their knees here as Scotland scored a bonus point, fourth try. 
the flower of Scotland was in full bloom. It even turned into a record home win over Wales with a fifth try. Next up, France in Paris in a fortnight. Chris Scudder, ITV News. Finally, Harry Styles was one of the big winners at the Brit Awards tonight, but the singer didn't try to hoard the limelight. He made a point of addressing the controversy over the all-male nominations for the new Artist of the Year prize, and he dedicated the award to the women he felt should have been in the running. With all the Brit's highlights, here's our entertainment reporter, Rishi Dabda. <laughs> His album is called Harry's House and Harry made the Brits his home, opening the show and going on to pick up all four awards he was nominated for. The man that just does not stop, Harry Styles. It was the Artist of the Year category that had been controversial after no women were nominated for the genderless award. Harry used his victory speech to pay tribute to those who could have been considered. I'm really, really grateful for this and I'm very aware of my privilege up here tonight. So this award is for Rena, Charlie, Florence, Mabel and Becky. Thank you so much. One of those he shouted out, Rena Sawayama, thinks organisers need to allow more than just five artists okay. to be nominated. No female nominees up for best artist. There was a worry this could happen when they moved away from the gendered categories. How do you see it as someone who's in the industry? Yeah, you know what, I think for me, being progressive on gender conversation is really important to me and like reflecting not only the times, but like, you know, how young people are now and also how artists are. I think that's really important. But what I think is the problem is that there's not enough slots for nominations. I don't want this to then become a conversation about, well, we shouldn't have combined the genders. We shouldn't have done this. I just think that's not the problem. We, we can't do this. Wetleg were big winners too, building on their recent Grammy success with two Brits. And Beyonce, who unfortunately wasn't in the room, thank won both so Best International Act and Song. I'd like to say thank you to all of my fans out there in Britain for your continuous support over the years. Harry Styles as it was. It may be British music's biggest party, but the night belonged to Harry Styles. Rishi Davda, ITV News. Yeah, well done to Harry. Uh, that is it. So your national and local weather forecast are next. But from all of us here, many thanks indeed for watching. A very good night. Goodbye.